transition alignments. Final stop whispering. All right, let's take a look at my uh, my uh, design here. So what I want to do here is I want to take this corridor model that I've already got built, and I want to build in a left turn lane. So my stationing uh, at the beginning of my alignment starts at zero zero at the top there, and you can see as I move through the range of stations, I've got a little polyline built here that will represent my left turn lane. So what I want this corridor model to do is on the left hand side follow along this uh, line here and widen out my left turn lane to represent my left turn bay. So uh, just to take a look at my my what I have going here I've got a, uh, a surface profile uh, in red here and I've got my layout profile in uh, blue. I've got a assembly and uh, my corridor built already. Okay, so pretty straightforward stuff. But if I want this transition lane to widen, it has to have some transition properties. So not all lanes will transition. If I select one of those lanes and go into my subassembly properties, you'll see that uh, in the parameters tab that that uh, lane is called a basic lane transition. So that means that that particular lane is built to widen and stretch to uh, any particular uh, width that I desire. So number one, your assembly has to be set up correctly and accommodate transition uh, uh, parameters. Uh, secondly, you have to have a surface and layout profile built and uh, lastly uh, a corridor. So I've got a corridor built and you can see that it's pretty straightforward as far as the corridor uh, looks. If I take a look at it in the object viewer, it's pretty standard. It maintains the same width throughout the range of stations as I move through here. Uh, you can see that uh, the red represents I'm in a cut situation. Those are my slopes that tie to my existing ground. And the green represents that I'm in a fill situation also tying down to my existing ground. Uh, but that's what the red and green means there. So you can see that I've got a consistent width of lane on both the left and right sides of my center line. Um, what I want it to do is stretch and widen on the left hand side and uh, adhere to this polyline that I've drawn. So in order to do that, uh, I have to have some type of geometry already created. As an example, this polyline will work just fine. Uh, but I also I, I find that uh, feature lines work a little bit better when working with transitions and uh, widening lanes and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this polyline that's uh, that's already been created. I'm going to convert it into a feature line. So uh, on my home tab. I'm going to select the uh, feature line option and I'm going to go create feature line from objects and all I'm going to do is go ahead and pick my polyline and hit enter and uh, I'll give it a name. The name of my alignment is called 8th Avenue so I'll call this 8th Avenue uh, transition left because it will represent my left lane and someday I may have a right uh, transition lane so I, I'll name them accordingly. I'll provide a style here. I've made a new style called transition feature line just so I can see it a little bit better but uh, uh, you can use any style you want. I'm going to erase my existing polyline and it's when I say OK it'll convert that into a feature line so you'll see now that it's a feature line. It's got a little bit more intelligence. It, it uh, You can do a lot more with a feature line than you can a regular polyline. So now that I've got a feature line that I can tie to, all I'm going to go in and do is in my corridor model, I'm going to go into my properties and uh, I'm going to select the parameters tab. And in the parameters tab, I'm going to go to select all targets. So you'll notice that I already have a couple of targets uh, set up here for my existing ground. So on the edges of my assembly, I have some daylighting tools that will tie to my existing ground surface and I've already told those to target to the existing ground and and slope to the uh, to the surface. Now you'll also notice here that both of my uh, transition lanes for the left and the right side also will allow me to target something. So on my left hand side I will go ahead and select uh, where it says none. I'll pick select from drawing and I'll just select my feature line right off the screen. So I'll pick that feature line, hit enter, 
and it'll tell me, okay, on the left-hand side, on the edge of that uh, transition lane, you want it to follow and stretch to that feature line that you have drawn. And I'll say, okay. And uh, I don't have one for the right-hand side, so I'll leave that empty. I'll say, okay. I'll say, apply, rebuild. It might give me some warnings or alerts, but that's fine. I'll say, okay, and close down my object viewer. But you can see now that uh, throughout most of the range of stations until I get to about range 260, 280, it'll start to widen out and uh, stretch and follow that polyline accordingly. And if I take a look at it now in the object viewer, you'll see that uh, it uh, has done exactly what I've told it and provided me with a left turn bay on that one side. So that's about it for uh, transition lanes and uh, you know as long as you got your geometry correct and your assembly set up properly uh, you should be good to go. Thanks. Bye.